Welcome to Parent Academy. My name is Misty Allen and I'm the Program Specialist for Duval County Public Schools Gifted Department. Um, I am here with Katherine Weeger and due to uh, COVID protocols, I'm going to step out of the frame so we can safely introduce ourselves. Good evening. As Misty just mentioned, I'm Katherine Wiegert. I'm the other gifted program specialist for Duval County Public Schools. Um, we could both be on screen with masks on, but we thought that would look a little bit strange on this webinar. So we just stepped out of the screen so we could each introduce ourselves. Tonight we're going to be talking about anxiety in gifted youth, and we'll be sharing a lot of information for, for you from the National Association of Gifted Children. Um, and we look forward to you learning more about this topic and seeking support if it's something that you need for your child. So if you hold on just a moment, we're going to share our screen and go through the PowerPoint. So if you want to grab a pen or pencil so you can jot down some notes, now would be a good time to do that. Okay, um, the information that we're going to be sharing tonight came from the 2020 NAGC National Conference. That is the National Association of Gifted Children. Uh, we attended that virtual conference this year and attended two sessions that um, spoke specifically about anxiety, and that's where we got the information that we're sharing tonight. Um, the first session was Managing Anxiety in Gifted Youth, and the second a uh, session was resources and strategies for teachers of high ability students who with anxiety. Things that we want you to remember this evening is that Misty and I are both gifted program specialists, but we are not mental health and behavioral experts. Um, if you are concerned uh, about your child and you feel that their anxiety is truly interfering with their everyday functioning, that's something that you need to seek additional support for. One of the ways that we suggest you do that is to contact their school counselor. Their school counselor could help and then also put you in contact with some behavioral specialists that can provide more support for you and your family. Tonight, we're just gonna talk about an overview of anxiety and how it affects gifted students, and you will get some basic coping strategies, but if you feel your needs are more intense than that, please reach out to your school counselor. The overview for tonight, we are gonna begin with talking about what is gifted, what does it mean to be gifted, and what does giftedness look like in students? Then we're going to move into anxiety and learn a little bit about what anxiety is and the positive aspects of anxiety and the negative aspects of anxiety. We'll also be talking about how anxiety manifests in gifted children. So what do those negative aspects look like in students who are gifted? And then as a parent, how can you help? So we're all looking to help our students and children the best that we can. So we are gonna provide resources for you, um, links that you can go to to dig a little deeper into this topic. Definition of gifted. There are multiple definitions of gifted and how to identify a gifted child. But our gifted department likes this definition by the Columbus Group because it speaks more to the whole child and talks about how a gifted child's brain just functions differently. It does not truly focus on achievement. So giftedness is asynchronous development in which advanced cognitive abilities and heightened intensity combine to create inner experiences and awarenesses that are qualitatively different from the norm. So what this looks like is you might have a student who has advanced cognitive abilities, so they are extremely advanced in math, but 
they have asynchronous development, which means they might have a lower social and emotional development age level um, that could be age advanced in their cognitive, or they could be below age development. Um, we want to remember that the gifted child has a brain that treats differently and makes them new, unique. And this definition asks us to remember that a student who is gifted can be particularly vulnerable and that that requires modifications in both parenting, um, in teaching, and in counseling our gifted students in order for them to develop optimally. This is going to be an approach that would be different than the norm. So now that we've defined giftedness, what is anxiety? Anxiety is a feeling of worry or unease, usually related to an uncertain outcome. People who have anxiety like to feel in control. They do not like when the outcome is uncertain. They like to know the answers. I know many of you can relate to that since you've logged on to this webinar tonight about your gift student. Your gifted student wants to know what's going to happen and they do not like when things are uncertain. Anxiety can be an irrational fear, okay, or a false alarm that a person thinks is rational. So even though you might think that your child's fears are irrational, remember that for your child, um, their anxiety is a very normal thing. And anxiety is normal. It is a response to stress. It's a way for us to adapt to stress. We all have a heightened sense of anxiety right now due to living in a global pandemic. We are getting more and more requests in our department of how to help students deal with additional stre stress due to the pandemic. The NAGC uh, resources that we're gonna show you at the end of the evening um, have some specific things on how to deal with anxiety and COVID for your students. But remember that anxiety is a normal response to stress. It's going to include feelings of tension and worry, and that can sometimes lead to physical symptoms. An example here would be a student who perhaps it needs to audition for the lead in their school play. They may wake up that morning and automatically get a stomach ache because they are anxious about the event. It could be a student that has a social studies presentation for their history fair project that day. They wake up with a headache. And these are normal um, responses to stress. But remember that if there is excessive anxiety that is chronic, it's frequent, and it's negatively impacting the daily functioning of your child, it could be indicative of an anxiety disorder. And as we said before, that's when you reach out for additional mental health support from your school counselor and behavioral specialist. All of us do experience anxiety to some level and short-lived levels of anxiety is normal and can lead to positive and productive outcomes. So what do these positive outcomes look like for students who are gifted? Um, first, students who are pushing towards high personal standards for themselves um, or striving towards a personal goals. So they do seem to have um, this anxiety uses, they use the anxiety as a drive, pushing them to higher standards, which is a positive thing. Um, also, students uh, experiencing positive levels of anxiety are, they have a level of conscientiousness. So they may appear very responsible. They meet deadlines for assignments and tasks. Um, they take great pride in their work, either their schoolwork or their chores at home, the way they keep their room or their performance on the athletic field or in fine arts. Um, and they want to do well and they want to please others. So that level of conscientiousness can be positive. 
Um, they also have a feeling of being in control. So um, this level of a normal level of anxiety would maybe um, show in a positive performance in a project or in a presentation or perhaps performing well in class or on a test or on a, um, a performance that they're doing, you know, a fine arts performance of some kind. Um, but when does the level of anxiety become um, excessive or long lasting? It can impact performance and health. So when does the frequency, intensity and duration become too much and what does it look like? Manifestations of anxiety in gifted children are things that can be behavioral, they can be physical, uh, mental. Anxiety manifests itself in multiple different ways and not the same way in each child. Um, you could have multiple children living in your household, perhaps they're all gifted and they all respond to anxiety in a different way. So some typical things that happen with anxiety in gifted children is that this student would have an undue worry about their performance despite previous success. Here we're talking about a student who's typically high achieving, does well in school, might have straight A's and gotten 100 on the last three tests, but they have an extreme level of anxiety about the upcoming test, okay? Um, Students are that was going to seem extremely irrational to you as a parent, but for a gifted student, that could be a normal response. Okay. Um, we do have gifted students that will just avoid any type of challenge and have a very low frustration tolerance. So perfectionism and anxiety are great friends is something that we'd like to say. One of the things to think about as a parent is to remember that your child's giftedness does tie in to their self-identity. So if we say things to them about their undue worry about performance, that, oh, you're smart, don't worry about it, you're gonna do great on that test. If we give them that message, the message they're gonna internalize is, well, if I don't do well on that test, that must mean I'm not smart. So we want to make sure that we're not um, putting together a child's self-identity with perfectionism and with giftedness. We want to make sure that they do not avoid all challenges. This could be a student that typically does really well in class but doesn't want to take an advanced level class because they're afraid they may not do as well could be a kid that doesn't want to try out for the baseball team because they are afraid that they may not make it. A student who's extremely talented when it comes to fine arts but does not want to share their work because they do not want to hear any negative feedback. So those are all typical responses of avoiding a challenge and we are going to talk about how to help your child through that. Another manifestation of anxiety in gifted children is irritability. They're in a bad mood. They have outbursts. They have disruptive behavior. This is another avoidance tactic and a coping mechanism for them to deal with their anxiety. They can report minor health discomfort. As we mentioned before, they may wake up and say that they have that stomach ache or that they have a headache. Students often have problems with concentration when they have anxiety. Sometimes they are just perseverating about a particular topic, about an event that's coming up that they're highly anxious about, and they cannot focus on anything else. It could be an abrupt change in their particular performance and they're avoiding doing work because they're afraid to make a mistake. Students who with anxiety often have sleep problems because their brain is going over and over and over again the ways in which they could possibly fail something or make a mistake. 
Um, and then also social withdrawal. We have students that will avoid a challenge or an unknown outcome, because remember that's what anxiety is, is it's worry about an unknown outcome. They may not wanna put themselves out there at recess or on the playground. They may be the kid that takes a book out to simply avoid not being picked for the kickball team or they don't know how to go about starting a conversation with someone. So they will socially with, withdraw themselves and move into their corner. So as a parent, you want to know how you can help your child and provide them with some coping strategies and ways in which they could deal with their stress and anxiety. Okay. So the biggest thing is to remember to make sure that your gifted child is not completely defined by their giftedness. And what we mean by that is if we are constantly giving the child the message that I'm so proud of you, you have straight A's, you're so smart, you're so great, you're going to do great things in life, you're so smart, even though our intention is to provide them with praise, Sometimes what happens is that a student will interpret that, that if they do possibly make a mistake, that that would mean that they're not smart anymore and that they're not gifted. And that truly is one of the reasons that they will avoid challenges or risk taking. And a way to approach that is to make sure that as a family, you are reflecting on the value of mistakes it is okay to make mistakes. We need to normalize this behavior for our children. And you wanna model this behavior. Make mistakes in front of your children. When you do, everyone makes mistakes. And that's a normal thing for kids to realize and show them how you respond to a mistake and how you recover from that mistake and how you approach it afterwards. You wanna model positive mistake behavior for your children. Then also reward those attempts and a child's persistence. A lot of times we praise students and reward straight A's on a report card when in reality, a lot of our kids don't have to put forth any effort in order to get those straight A's. We want to make sure that we're rewarding their attempts and their persistence. If a student has studied and studied for two hours in order to get a B on a math test, that is almost more impressive for that student to show the process of their behaviors and their persistence than the child that did not study at all and got an easy A. Both of those things are normal and important to praise both the outcome and the process, but oftentimes as parents, we forget to praise the process and we're so focused as a society on the outcome. So we wanna say things to our children like, I really can see the effort that you're putting into doing well here. And I like how you recovered from making that mistake. What can we learn from it? Okay. You wanna avoid reasoning with an escalated anxious child. No one is going to calm down if you tell them to calm down. So do not try and rationalize a child's feelings when they are escalated. You do not want to minimize their feelings and tell them to get over it or tell them to move on. Approach your child with empathy and with understanding and listen to how they're Again, you're going to want to make sure that you are not allowing your child to be defined by their giftedness. Their giftedness might explain their intensity in their response to anxiety, but it does not excuse maladaptive behavior. So a student who is gifted might have some of these manifestations, but we're not going to say that that's okay. We want to make sure that we are teaching them strategy to improve behaviors and coping skills. Give your children occasional permission to be messy, to be late, to have something incomplete. And again, honor the time invested into something, not necessarily the outcome. A lot of times gifted students will not attempt something if they don't think that they can be the best at it. Honor the time your child invests into something 
and not always necessarily the final outcome in comparison to others. Again, if you feel that your child is not dealing with their anxiety in a way that can help them function in a normal day, you need to seek out additional support from your school counselor and they can put you in contact with some behavioral specialists. Parent resources that we want to share with you today. Um, the first comes from NAGC, the National Association of Gifted Children. And these tip sheets are two sided sheets with information about um, issues that are common to gifted students. So um, the snapshot we have to the on the right side of your screen is the tip sheet from perfectionism, which we know is related to anxiety. So if you are looking for additional support specific to parents of gifted students on not only anxiety or perfectionism, but other common issues related to giftedness, the NAGC parent tip sheets are a really great resource. The second resource is for anxiety at home and managing that anxiety. Um, we know that gifted students are not just stressed and um, ha experience anxiety when they're at school, but it also shows up in other areas of their life. So this is a great article about ways to reduce stress in the home environment. The National Association of School Psychologists has a great um, website that you can look at for parent resources and uh, podcasts, not only about anxiety, but other issues related to um, students as well. Castle.org is a great resource for social and emotional learning. It includes tools, um, implementation strategies, and a resource library um, about all kinds of different social and emotional issues. So this particular link is for teenagers with anxiety, but there are other resources at the site as well. And last but not least is um, a link for SANG, which is Supporting Emotional Needs of Gifted Learners. This is a link to an article on de-escalating emotions and how to regain control for your students. So this is just a um, short list of resources that may help you dig deeper into this issue for your child. Um, if you are watching this on the Parent Academy website or homepage, then these links are hyperlinked just below this video. If you're watching it on YouTube, then you may just want to pause the video and get a piece of paper and jot down these links so that you can um, access them at a later time. All right, we also want to provide you with our link, our, our email links. Um, I am Misty Allen, and my information is allenm4 at duvalschools.org. Uh, Catherine Wiegert is wiegertc at duvalschools.org. Um, we want to provide these email addresses for you so that you can reach out to us if you have additional questions or have specific questions about your student and the program that they're at at their school. We just want to thank you for joining this Parent Academy session tonight. Um, we appreciate your attendance and we are happy to provide you with this resource to help your gifted student. And again, I'm Catherine Weger. Just wanted to say thank you for joining us. Uh, Misty and I are definitely here to support you with any questions that you have. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, so that we can help support you and your gifted student. Thank you so much for being here tonight.